Amen. Great singing tonight. If you'll stand with us as we sing another song. His name was Chuck. His daddy called him Chucky. He was just a little guy. In fact, he was four, maybe four and a half, five years old. They lived on a busy street. Cars were always zooming by. And Chucky had a bad habit. His bad habit was this. He would be playing with his ball out in the front yard. The, front, the ball would run out, roll out into the street, and Chucky would run out and get the ball. And as he was running out to get the ball, his daddy would always grab him and say, Chucky, don't run out in the street. You could get killed running out in the street. That's dangerous. It's okay to play ball. Play ball in the backyard. Don't play ball in the front yard because if you play ball in the front yard, you're going to wind up getting hurt. Don't ever, ever, ever follow your ball out into the street. He heard that over and over and over again. But Chucky, just being the little boy that he was, would always disobey his father. The ball would, he not thinking, he would run out in this, roll out in the street, and Chucky would run out after that ball and grab his ball. And again, he would get a spanking. He would be told, don't go out in the street. Someone's gonna get killed one of these days with that ball going out in the street. One day, Chucky's dad was in the house, and he and his friends were out in the front yard. As they were playing ball together, the ball again was kicked by his close friend out in the street. Chucky didn't even think about it. He started running out in the street. The last thing that Chucky remembers is this. He remembers his dad yelling, Chucky! And pushing him as hard as he could. He said, I thought in my mind, I thought in my mind, why is my dad pushing me like that? And then he heard, hug, boom. And his dad was gone. Chuck Frazier told me that story as we were driving in his big van to California, or not to, to Pennsylvania uh, on a trip from Virginia. And as he began to tell that story, I was telling him how my dad died when I was 10 years old. He said, my dad died when I was four or five. And I said, what happened? He told me the story. And as he told me the story, tears came down his eyes. He said, my dad died saving my disobedient 
life. That story was absolutely as real at the time that Chuck told me as it was the day it happened to him. That story was a real story. That story was no fairy tale. That story was the story of one man giving his life for his son. It was something that impacted him forever. The story that we're looking at tonight is in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, at verse 23, Paul says, I have del- for I received of the Lord, this is 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. 23, for I received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. This is a real story. This isn't something that was made up. This is reality. And when he had given thanks, he break it. And he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, which when he had supped, saying, this cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat of this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let no man examine himself. Or let, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning this is the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned of the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another, and if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Father, as we remember tonight what you did, I pray, Father, the reality of the story would hit us. Father, just as... Chuck remembers the story of what his father did to save his physical life. We will remember the reality of the story of what you did, Lord Jesus, when you went to the cross. What your son did, Heavenly Father, when he gave himself for us. And Father, the sacrifice you made so that we could have your Holy Spirit living inside of us. I pray, Father, you would remind us tonight, and Father, that you would, Father, break us tonight that we might remember to live the way you want us to live. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Tonight we partake of the Lord's Supper. And there are several things that I want you to see just in what the Apostle Paul says here about the Lord Jesus Christ. The first word that I want you to remember is reality. This is not a made up, as I said, fairy tale. This is a real thing that took place. 2,000 years ago, a baby did come. A baby was born. That baby lived for 33 years on this earth, suffered what you and I suffered, went through what you and I went through, experienced what it was like to be a man and experienced the temptation and the suffering and the hurt and far beyond any agony that you and I could ever imagine, he suffered for us. This is real. He he really was spit upon. He really was beaten with a cat of nine tails His back was ripped to shreds. A crown of thorns was put on his head and blood streamed down his face. Nine inch Roman nails were driven in his hands. And he did that 
for you and me, disobedient sinners. The Bible said he didn't die for us when we were good. He died for us when we were bad, when we were yet sinners. He did this, and he did it because we were sinners. He had to die in your place, or you would have to have spent eternity in hell. He suffered the equivalent of hell on the cross so that you and I could have eternal life. This is a real story. He suffered real agony. He suffered real pain. He went through the agony of the body, agony of the soul. He was ripped away from all his earthly companions. Then he was ripped away from his relationship with his fathers. And he experienced spiritual death on the cross so that you and I could have spiritual life. It is reality. The first word. The second word I want you to see in this story is this. In verse 24, the Bible says, and when he had given thanks, he break it, <coughs> and he said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. It's not only a real story, God, it's a story God wants you to remember. When we remember it, it is not something to take lightly. I remember to this day driving down the road, sitting in the passenger side of that yellow van with Chuck as he told me this story. He told me the story of how he lost his father and that it was his fault. And I could see Chuck gripping the steering wheel tighter as he told the story. The agony that he felt because of his dad's death for him. Man, we need to understand what Jesus did for us. And he, as he remembered that, it hurt him. Tears came down his face. And I don't think it's necessary for us to go into any kind of morbid thinking about that and weeping, but I think it's so important. God wants us to remember this real story. That's why we sing the old rugged cross. That's why we sing about the cross upon which Jesus died. That's why we sing at Calvary. That's why we look at the video. That's why we have the cross. God wants us to remember that he did shed his blood for us. That he did, that he did have his body broken for us. That he did all of that. He said, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. This is important to him, and it ought to be important to us. It's a time when we partake of the Lord's Supper that we remember the reality, and number two, that we remember him. And number three, there's a third R that I think is so important. This time of partaking of the Lord's Supper, as we remember him, as we remember the reality of his death and the agony of his death, it's important that we take time to re-examine our life. Look what it says in verse 27. It says, wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. This is not something we take lightly. It's not something we take and just trivialize in any way. This is a real happening. This is something we remember. And every time we partake, God wants us to examine our lives, re-examine our lives. Look at the Bible says in verse uh, In verse 28, it says, but let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Note this. God doesn't say, before you partake of the Lord's Supper, examine yourself, and then if you're not worthy, don't partake. 
He doesn't say that. I've had people who've said, I'm not coming to the Lord's Supper because I've got things in my life that I need to get right and I don't want to partake of the Lord's Supper. That's not what God says to do. You see, the Lord's Supper is giving us a time, every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, to re-examine ourselves. To say, hey, am I doing what God wants me to do? Am I living the way God wants me to live? Are there things in my life I need to confess and get right? Am I, am, am I pure before God? The Bible tells us this, that if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and his truth is not in us. But if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So how do I get prepared to partake of the Lord's Supper? At the time of the Lord's Supper, I re-examine my life. I look at my life and I say, Lord, have, is there anything in my life that I've not confessed to you? Are there things in my life that I'm justifying? Are there things in my life that, that are not honoring to you? God, show there, show me, show me, examine me, see if there's any wicked thing in me. And then if there is, I don't say, oh well, I guess I won't partake of the Lord's Supper. No, I confess that sin to God. And I take time even tonight to purify my life by saying, God, I confess. God, I have this problem. Father, I have this thing that I do. I want to confess to you my selfishness. I want to confess to you my pride. I want to confess to you my, my lack of love. I want to confess to you my critical spirit. I want to confess to you my jealousy. I want to confess to you whatever it is. I confess it to you. I admit that it was, it's wrong. I ask you to cleanse me of this thing. I confess to you. Father, take this thing away. That's what God wants us to do. We come to the Lord's Supper. We don't say, oh, well, I'm, I, I'm going to keep this thing in my life, so I'm not going to partake of the Lord's Supper. No. This is a time of purification. It's a time where we reexamine our lives and say, God, show me that thing so I can confess it to you even tonight so I can be cleansed and I can be worthy of the Lord's Supper. If you're not a Christian, then you need to say, Lord, I recognize that I'm a sinner. I deserve to go to hell. But I believe that you died on the cross to pay for my sin. And since you suffered hell for me on the cross, I want to receive what you've done. I want to receive you as my Lord and Savior and God. And become a child of God, then you can partake of the Lord's Supper. Not because we're perfect, but because we've confessed our sin. Confession of sin prepares our hearts to partake of the Lord's Supper. So one of the reasons that God has us to partake of the Lord's Supper is so that we can re-examine our lives so that we can be pure and we can get those things right. It's a time of re-examination. It's a time of reality. It's a time of remembrance. It's a time to re-examine your life. And then it's a time to reaffirm your faith in him. It's a time for you to say, I, I, I remember what you did for me. For the Bible tells us this, that, that when we partake of it unworthily, we're guilty of the body and blood. When we come to God and we say, Lord, I thank you. I know that I don't deserve anything from you. I know that I don't deserve a thing uh, I deserve to go to hell. And yet you reached down to where I am and you gave me eternal life. And I just love you and I thank you. This is a time of reaffirmation. We are saved. We're on our way to heaven. But we get out in this world, don't we? And we get dirty in this world. We have the dirt of this world all over our feet, all over our hands. I, I, whenever I'm going out and going anywhere, I, I get back home and Anna says, before you get in the refrigerator, David, wash your hands. Why? Because though I'm her husband, though I live in the house, though I have a right to the refrigerator, I've been out in the, des I've been out in the dirt, I've been out in the, in the world, and my hands have gotten dirty. And I need to get that stuff off before I grab something and stuff it in my face. We get out in the world and we get dirty, don't we? 
we get out and we hear things and we get, we, get, we get polluted with the things of this world and then we come into God's house and we need to be re- reminded of who we are and what we're supposed to do and we need to take time to cleanse. We need to take time to reaffirm our faith and when we're reminded again of what Jesus did, what Jesus did for us, we recognize that it's not something that heaven is nothing that we will ever deserve, that his love is not something that we have earned, that his grace has given us everything we have. And when we think of the cross, it reaffirms our faith, not in our good works, but in our Savior who was willing to die for us. The, the Lord's Supper is a time of reality. It's a time of remembrance It's a time to re-examine our lives. It's a time to reaffirm our faith in Him. And lastly, it's a time to reunite with our brothers. Because Jesus didn't just do this for you, and Jesus didn't just do this for you, and Jesus didn't just do this for you. Jesus did that for all of us. And we need to remember that he loves each and every one of us as much as he loves me. He loves you as much as he loves me. He loves me as much as he loves you. That we are his and we are his children. It says in verse 33, wherefore my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. In God there is no rich and poor, there is no black or white, there is no male or female, and him We are his children, and he cares about us. There's not the socially acceptable and the unsociable, socially acceptable. There's not the the, the upper class and the lower class and the middle class and the people with no class. There's just us as his children meeting together in his family, and we are united together. We come to the same table, don't we? We eat of the same cup. Uh, of the same bread, we drink of the same cup. We all are partaking of the same meal together. And this is a time of unity and fellowship. It's a time where we are reunited with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so it's appropriate that during this holiday season that we would partake of the Lord's Supper. If any man have any man hunger, let him eat at home, that you, that you come not together with condemnation, and I, the rest I'll set in order when I come. Brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. In just a moment, we, we, will, uh, we will pass out the elements, and we'll ask that everybody hold on to the bread before, until everyone is served. We'll all serve one another, and then after we are all served, we will all partake together, showing the unity that we have in Jesus Christ. And so, as we partake of the Lord's Supper tonight, remember, remember, God wants us to to know the reality. God wants us to remember his suffering. God wants us to re-examine our lives. God wants us to reaffirm our faith. And God wants us to reunite as a family as we partake of his supper, remembering what he did for us. So it all starts with us coming before God individually, re-examining ourselves, making sure that we are right with God so that we can ask God to empower us to do his work as we face a brand new year. So let's do that right now. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Father, I thank you so much for what you've done for us. Thank you for what the Lord's Supper means. Thank you for instituting this for your local church. Thank you that we can partake partake together in unity. Thank you for the reality of this story and Father for giving us witnesses that would bear the reality of the story and write it down so we have it even today. We have that witness. Lord, we remember what Jesus did for us. We thank you for your willingness, Lord Jesus, to die on the cross for us. And tonight we come to remember this. 
Father, I pray that each person here tonight would examine themselves. And Father, that they would reaffirm their faith in you. And that, Father, we would leave this place united in heart and mind to do your will and accomplish your purpose in sharing your truth with others. Heads are still bowed and eyes are still closed. I want to ask a question. Do you know for sure if you died right now you'd go to heaven? If you do, would you slip up your hand as a testimony to that? Thank you. You can put your hands down. Maybe you've never trusted Christ. Maybe you're hearing you say, Preacher, I don't know for sure I'm going to heaven, but I'd like to know that. And by an uplifted hand, you'd say, Preacher, pray for me. I'm not sure I'm saved, but I'd like to be sure I'm saved. And I'd like you to pray for me. The Bible says Jesus died for you. You can receive him tonight. You'd say, Preacher, pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven, but I'd like to know that. Please pray for me. Anybody like that, I'd like to pray for you. Now, I don't see any hands going up, but I want you to know that right now, if you've never done that, you can pray these words to Jesus. and You can ask him to give you eternal life. Right now, you can pray, Dear Lord Jesus, I know that you are God, and I know that I'm a sinner. And I know I don't deserve to go to heaven. I believe that you died in my place to pay for my sin so I could go to heaven. I believe you rose from the dead proving that you are God. And right now, in the best way I know how, I call on you and I ask you to be my Lord and my Savior and my God. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Help me now to live for you. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, then you've become a child of God. God wants you to partake of this tonight in honor of him and remembering his death. Christian, God says in this word to examine yourself before you partake of the Lord's Supper. It's not up to me to examine you. You're to examine your own life before you partake of the Lord's Supper tonight. Is there anything in your life you need to say, God, forgive me. I've been justifying this sin. I haven't been what you want me to be. And I want to confess to you. Get that thing right with God before you partake of the Lord's Supper. And then don't hold back. Don't refuse to take of some, because of some sin. Confess that sin to him. Get it right and then partake of the Lord's Supper. Would you do that tonight? Father, we bow before you recognizing we don't deserve what you've done for us. And as we partake of this, remembering your broken body and your shed blood, we pray, Father, that you would um, show us areas in our life that we need to confess so that we might honor you in what we do and what we say. And Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus, cleanse us, purify us, make us a holy vessel as a church collectively, and then use us this next week to share your truth with those around us. And we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'd like to have those who are going to help with the Lord's Supper to come forward, and uh, we will begin to distribute the elements. Again, as we looked in the passage, Paul said, For I have received of the Lord that which I also delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he, take, he, take, he break it. And he said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. At this moment, we're going to distribute the bread when we distribute the bread, we would ask that nobody partake of the bread. If you have small children with you, if they're not saved, please don't let them partake. 
If they are saved, please um, help them to understand the severity and the importance of what we are doing. And don't let them take it with a trivial uh, thought. Just make sure that we understand that this is a time where we remember what Christ did for us. The bread represents his broken body. We will distribute it all, come back and serve one another, and then uh, we will thank the Lord together and then partake of the bread together at that time. At this time, we will distribute the bread. Again, Jesus said, uh, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Brother Matthew Tice, would you thank the Lord for his broken body? 
tonight, Lord, as we take a few moments to remember your body was broken as the bread crumbles in our hands and our mouths. May we remember that it was your body that was torn, that was beaten, that was pierced, and you allowed your body to go through that because you loved us enough to pay for our sin. We thank you for it, and we pray that you would use this time of remembrance and reality in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. The Bible says, after the same manner also, he took the cup. This time we will distribute the cup, and we'd ask again that everybody allow everybody to be served before we all partake, and then we'll thank the Lord for his blood and partake together. After the same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Crystal Armstrong, would you pray and thank the Lord for his shed blood for us? Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this time that we can come together to 
remember what you've done for us. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for this, your blood that was shed for us. And that we would continue to remember this every day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Bible says, for as often as you eat this bread and you drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Chuck told me that story that night when we were driving on the road, 80, Interstate 81 up to Pennsylvania. When he told me the story, he said, I decided as I got older and I understood exactly what my father did that I was going to dedicate my life to telling other people about Jesus Christ. Chuck lived his life in service for the Lord and has, even to this day, is faithfully serving the Lord. He's worked as a camp host. He has worked in many different ministries. He gave his life to serve the Lord. And one reason was because he remembered the death of his father. I think when we remember what Jesus did for us, it causes us to be dedicated to the things that God wants us to do. And we need to remember that and always keep our minds focused on serving the Lord. We're going into a brand new year. Let's keep ourselves pure. Let's keep ourselves consecrated. And let's determine we're not here to judge or condemn anyone. We are simply here to serve the King of kings and Lord of lords and direct people to him. As long as he gives us breath, then we should use that breath to tell others about Jesus. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I'm glad that you came. I want to remind you, if you did not fill out a connection card this morning, to fill out a connection card. We're going to be taking an offering in just a few minutes. Fill out the connection card. Drop it in the offering plate. If you have a prayer request that you'd like us to pray for, make sure that you mark that prayer request on the back of that card. Also, I want to encourage you to uh, welcome... Uh, Back in the back during the, at the end of the service, don't let them sneak out. Go back and say a warm welcome to Daniel and Vicki and to Peggy. Let them know that you're glad that they're members of Liberty Baptist Church. They're right back there. They're hidden in what I call the cave uh, area of the church. And you go back there and you let them know how glad you are to have them as members of our church. It's wonderful to have a body where we can meet together and like a family enjoy one another. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Pastor Matt, you come. As Pastor mentioned, take your fill, uh, connection card if you haven't already, fill it out. If you didn't put one in this morning, we would love to pray with you and just share uh, with you what needs are going on in your life. Uh, as you're dismissed this evening in the lobby, there is uh, the last night of our bookstore uh, book sale. There are a few devotionals the pastor mentioned. I think there's 20 more of these uh, new family devotionals for your family life, thriving in your family life. And uh, there might just be one or two of these ladies' devotionals. You might want to pick those up before you leave tonight and uh, uh, take some time to uh, study the Word of God together as a family. Next Sunday morning, we'll have services all, all morning long, just like we did today. And then next Sunday evening, we'll take some time to chart out what God wants us to do in this next year. We hope you'll be part of that. And there is a midweek service this Wednesday night at 630. I want to invite each of you to um, celebrate the life of Enrique Berrigan. That's uh, this Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock here on the, in the campus. Uh, Ricky Berrigan was saved probably about 25 years ago, I would say. What would you say? It was about that. And uh, was just a great member of this community. He came to know Christ a little bit later in his age and uh, was married to a wonderful lady named Dana. And uh, they have wonderful children that have served here in the ministry and have been a part of this uh, church body for a long time. About three weeks ago, Ricky passed away. And 82 83 years old, he passed away, and we'll re be remembering his life at uh, his memorial service here on Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock, and the family extends uh, uh, their gratitude to you if you want to come and participate and uh, celebrate his life. I know that that would be honoring to him. He was a great friend, and uh, uh, he'll be missed, but he's in heaven with Dana spending Christmas. Isn't that wonderful? So I want to invite you to be part of that. Let me invite the ushers to come forward. We'll receive this evening's offering, and uh, Emily will play a special. When her special is done, we'll be dismissed. We thank you, Lord, for the privilege of being able to give to you. I pray that you would use everything that is given in this evening's service for your glory. Bless each person who gives.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.